Uh, good evening. Uh, it's a great pleasure for me to be here, and uh, I'm delighted to uh, speak to uh, an audience uh, here in Doha. I want to thank uh, Georgetown University and uh, the School of Foreign Service and the Dean for his uh, gracious invitation and for his kind uh, remarks. I want to congratulate the uh, uh, Qataris, uh, those of you who are here from Qatar for your uh, various accomplishments, uh, including uh, the hosting of the 2022 FIFA World Cup. Uh, uh, of course, the United States would have liked to have hosted this, but uh, uh, I'm glad that uh, Qatar made such an excellent presentation and that uh, you will have uh, this uh, opportunity uh, in this part of the world. I thought what I would do is to talk about the uh, uh, United States and the Middle East uh, uh, in two contexts. One is the uh, framework uh, of uh, thinking about the Middle East after 9-11, which was a decisive uh, moment in American history in terms of its approach to this part of the world. And then uh, uh, to uh, talk about uh, 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 a transition to a new uh, approach, uh, which I think it is in the uh, formation uh, it still has not crystallized yet, but I believe that we are in a transition, and uh, uh, which means, as, as the word itself implies, uh, uh, continuity uh, uh, and change. Uh, and, and, and so in order to talk about the, what it will, uh, in my judgment, is likely to continue and what might change or adjust, it's good to see the baseline of where we are or where we have been. And therefore, I would, I would begin with some observations uh, with regard to the impact of 9-11 and the post-9-11 approach. I think that uh, the 9-11 had a big impact on American thinking the official thinking, although, as you know, America is a vast uh, country with lots of uh, institutions, uh, players, uh, uh, and so sometimes it is hard to speak about America in a, in, a, in a single conceptualization. But I do believe that in terms of its government at its highest levels, there is a, a process uh, of, of, of policy formulation or conceptualization of policy that has a significant degree of coherence. Uh, although it, uh, 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 there may be bureaucratic rivalries, uh, there may be issues of execution, uh, but in its conceptualization, uh, ultimately as the strategy gets approved, there is, there is, there is uh, clarity and coherence. And it is my judgment that 9-11 uh, made the United States think of this broad region, uh, of the, uh, which, if you remember, was talked about as the greater Middle East. Some talked about the broader Middle East, to include the area from Morocco all the way to Pakistan, as an area that was geopolitically, in terms of security, in terms of the challenges for the United States and the world, the most important and the most difficult. Uh, and there was a belief that it was the problem of this region, the dysfunctionality, uh, the challenges of this region that produces uh, problems for the world, meant that other regions of the world had also problems, but they were by comparison, not as important, as consequential at this time in the post-9-11 world as the future of this region. And some were comparing uh, the, uh, uh, this region of the world in terms of its impact to what Europe was uh, in the earlier periods, 
19th century, early 20th century, where the European problems, the, the inability of Europeans to work together, the competition among Europeans, conflicts among Europeans, were the most important of the challenges that the world faced. And the European problems became the problems of the world, including causing what later, in some phases, became world conflicts. <clears throat> so in the post-9-11 environment, there was a, a, a belief that similar to Europe uh, in the earlier period, it was now this region and its problems that was the most important and the most consequential in terms of security challenges that it, that it posed for the world. And therefore, that whether America liked it or not, uh, as it was in the case of Europe, that uh, even though there were isolationist tendencies that existed in America, uh, the, the tendency n uh, to avoid external entanglement, which has been a streak present in the United States uh, from its creation. After all, uh, Americans mostly came from Europe in order to to get away from what they consider to be the problems of Europe, and they, they wanted to avoid getting entangled in the European problem. That was a streak that continues to be uh, uh, in America, in the psychic, and it increases and decreases under uh, a specified set of circumstances, and one sees it growing now again, uh, this tendency to want to avoid uh, entanglement or withdrawal a little bit from the world. Uh, 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 that, but in the post 9 11 environment was that uh, if you can't escape these problems, that they come after you if you don't deal with them, and therefore you had to become involved uh, and deal with the challenges posed from this region and the, a vision of working towards a region that would uh, be more uh, uh, at peace with itself and with the world became a strong tendency orientation uh, uh, in the U.S. Uh, foreign policy debate discussions and, 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 and doctrines. Now, what was the implication of this such a conceptualization uh, uh, of the, both the importance of the region uh, for the world, the uh, security of the world, um, and its challenges uh, was that, one, there were governments that uh, uh, their very presence, given their relationship with uh, terrorists and extremists, were one manifestation of the problems of the region, uh, was the, that those governments uh, uh, should be uh, uh, overthrown. And the first one, uh, the key one that this applied to was the Taliban regime. And the, 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 the uh, 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 fixing of Afghanistan, uh, since we're talking about the broader Middle East, uh, became an objective. Uh, uh, and and, and, and uh, the commitment to make Afghanistan or help Afghanistan work uh, became a, 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 a pronounced uh, political and military objective of the United States. And there was a, a, a big effort to make this effort as international as possible, uh, seeking a UN mandate for the operation, having other countries participate both uh, in the initial uh, effort to overthrow the regime, but also in the, in the uh, uh, effort to build a new government and in the effort to, to uh, reconstruct Afghanistan. The same applied then later on uh, to the, to the uh, regime in Iraq uh, with the idea that, and I remember this very vividly, that leaving Iraq as it was, uh, uh, a country under sanctions with uh, a, a sanction regime that was faltering uh, with a uh, 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 
situation militarily in the north of the country where uh, U.S. airplanes were enforcing a fly zone uh, with uh, a, a government that was uh, uh, bent on uh, belief uh, in the belief that existed at that time of acquiring weapons of mass destruction with a, 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 a desire to escape those circumstances, which was understandable from their point of view, that one had to deal with this problem sooner because if you wait, it was, getting, it was gonna get worse down the road. But in addition, of course, to this change in government, there was an effort to go after the extremists and terrorists uh, themselves with a focus particularly in the area of, of Afghanistan and Pakistan and in other areas of the region and even beyond where those groups operated. And another pillar of the policy being one to oppose those uh, governments uh, that, uh, that sought uh, to uh, 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 support groups uh, that uh, sought to use violence as a means uh, to overthrow others that the United States regarded as moderate and worthy of support. And in, uh, the conceptualization also that the ultimate answer, besides opposing certain regimes, overthrowing others, and uh, going after the terrorist group was to encourage the process of democratization and uh, 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 a belief that democratization through elections, support of civil society organizations was going to lead to uh, uh, a, 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 a decrease in the unhappiness uh, of the people uh, that in turn that unhappiness of the people produces extremism and therefore political empowerment openness, uh, opening more of the political process with uh, 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 additional steps that I described would over time in the long term produce a more uh, freer, a more democratic, and a more uh, peaceful region. A key idea, of course, was what is some other issues that also impact uh, uh, the stability of this region and its uh, uh, development, and that was uh, the issue of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. I have not dealt historically di directly with the issue of Israel-Palestine, but there is a broad understanding was in the United States government that for the ultimate success of uh, pr producing a region that is at peace with itself, and can function for its people, this problem must also be dealt with and solved. And, and, and the, the two-state solution was the answer that, uh, that uh, uh, must be operationalized for uh, 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 not only peace and, uh, and stability between Israelis and Palestinians, but also for the security of the region and therefore its impact on the future of the world. Now, of course, as we all know, the design and its implementation had uh, uh, many consequences. The situation in Afghanistan has uh, proven to be far more difficult than initially thought. Uh, the, the challenges of the region has impacted uh, 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 success in Afghanistan. One of the chip problems of the region has been that uh, 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 in the case of Afghanistan, uh, uh, the uh, execution of the uh, strategy to stabilize the country has run into some of the, some significant difficulties. One uh, was the challenge of uh, cooperation with the neighbors. Uh, Afghanistan has had a difficult relationship since uh, this change uh, uh, because one of the neighbors 
uh, Pakistan uh, has uh, uh, been both a friend to uh, Afghanistan and the United States in allowing assistance for the coalition forces to be brought into uh, uh, Afghanistan uh, to assist with uh, uh, moving against some uh, al-Qaeda and other extremist uh, targets. But at the same time, it has felt uh, uh, that the new order is not entirely to its satisfaction because of re its relations uh, with other powers in the region, such as India, and because it has felt that uh, 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 it must play a significant role itself in Afghanistan, and the way that it can do so is not only to have relations with the current government, but also to maintain a sanctuary and support in the Taliban, in part because of uncertainty about whether the U.S. will have the staying power with the coalition for as long as it's needed, thinking maybe it will not, and therefore there will be another play for Afghanistan, and therefore it must have forces uh, that it uh, uh, has relations with for the ultimate future of Afghanistan. It has selected the Taliban, the Akani Network, and the, uh, and the uh, Hekmatyar group, uh, uh, the Hizb Islami, as instruments, uh, principal instruments for that influence. And then another neighbor to the, to the, to the West, uh, Iran, which has uh, felt threatened by another instrument or another element of the U.S. policy and by its own objectives, the instrument of the U.S. opposing those, uh, some government, Iran and Syria being the two at that time, uh, and therefore supporting groups who were against the United States to keep the U.S. under pressure. Uh, and and, and, and uh, uh, the level of effort in terms of the state building and nation building in Afghanistan also has had some difficulties and challenges. And therefore, the, 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 the project that looked very successful in the earlier years, uh, uh, from 2002 to 2005 and 6, it, it looked uh, uh, that it was going extremely well at relatively low cost now has become a project that, is, uh, that, that has required uh, a much bigger effort and has become much more difficult to do. Similarly, in the case of Iraq, uh, uh, the, the, the overthrow, which was less universally acclaimed and supported than the operation in Afghanistan and was particularly unpopular in this part of the world, uh, 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 for a variety of reasons that I'm sure during question and answer some of those issues will, will come up, uh, uh, run into uh, 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 challenges uh, having to do with the, uh, uh, the, the initial building of a government by the coalition ruling Iraq the, uh, for a period, then the conceptualization of the new state, uh, the uh, desire of uh, 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 some groups to dominate uh, and others to not participate to bringing about uh, uh, a, 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 an ultimate agreement over the new distribution of power in Iraq and the Iraq being a kind of transition state between the Arab, Persian, and Turkish worlds, a regional rivalry a, uh, manifesting itself in ways that uh, has worked to the dis uh, 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 to, to disadvantage of Iraqi stability by different powers supporting different groups uh, in Iraq. I believe that uh, the, the, the Iraq, although still remains in a difficult transition, is in an improved situation than it was uh, at times in its recent past since the overthrow of the regime. Uh, where you, yours, uh, you, you see that the, uh, the, the uh, 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 sectarian conflict that dominated Iraq 2005, 2006, 2007 has abated to a, a significantly. It's not gone away, but, uh, but, but uh, 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 the, the challenge of uh, overcoming 
this sectarianism altogether and establishing institutions that are respected by all Iraqis continue to remain. But it is, I believe, it's, uh, it's if the agreement that was made uh, recently is implemented, can put Iraq on the right path. Now, uh, I, I also mentioned, besides these two that I know more about and some of the other issues that we talked about, we have had limited progress, uh, if at all, in dealing with uh, the Arab-Israel conflict. There has been some but limited progress with regard to the issue of democratization more broadly. Uh, Sometimes the elections that were supported, uh, rather than producing uh, 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 the outcomes that expected, uh, produced outcomes that complicated the situation even more. And as a result, progress towards democratization has been very uneven. There has been progress in some areas, sit back in other. And given all of this, which means a record that uh, can be at best described of limited, limited progress on the agenda, I think that, uh, that the, 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 the policy of where do you go from here uh, uh, is influenced by a variety of factors. First, the situation in the region itself. And that situation, uh, that, that situation uh, is, it, it remains as difficult as before, uh, with some challenges being less, others being more. I think the Iraqi challenge is less now than at times in the past. But the challenge of what you do uh, with regard to Iran has become more uh, urgent, more immediate uh, uh, in, in some ways. Uh, the challenge of what you do with Afghanistan, as I mentioned, has grown. Uh, the, the challenge of terror and extremism remains. It has become weaker in some areas and has spread in others. The tactics have changed. And the Arab-Israel problem, as we have uh, even seen in the last few days, is, is, is stalemated uh, once again uh, uh, with prospects for success. Uh, not looking uh, very promising. Given all that, where, where, where is uh, 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 the world, especially the United States, will go? It will go not only because, uh, it, it will look at other options, not only because of what I just described, but also because the rest of the world has changed, and the US has changed, which is important to keep in mind. First, some other areas have grown in terms of, uh, uh, of, of uh, uh, their potential for stability and instability to affect the world. This is particularly true of East Asia, where the, the, the rise of China, the challenges of North Korea, uh, the rise of India, uh, the whole architecture for the future of that region all of a sudden has become much more front and center. Second, more broadly, uh, although security issues remain, it is the future of the world economy, including the US economy, that has gained in relative importance. And, and, and the combination, the rise of other regional problems, and uh, the growing importance of the, of the economic factors, including the US economy, I, I think will, uh, will uh, result in adjustments in policy in the following ways. And, and, and uh, uh, the, f the first one is that I think even with those issues that I described, focus on, on the issue of terror, especially groups such as Al-Qaeda that potentially can threaten the United States directly will remain. Uh, uh, I think there is, uh, that is not going to change for as long as there is the perception, the belief, and the reality that these groups are plotting and planning attacks, uh, including against the United States homeland. There may be uh, 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 different types of activities against them in different parts, but that will not change. I believe the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the focus on the grand design of democratization of the entire region as the, as the goal, it will not be abandoned but we already see a lesser emphasis 
than uh, was seen at times in the past uh, during the last 10 years or nine years, we, a lesser emphasis on seeking transformation uh, and a greater emphasis on stability uh, uh, in order not to produce more demands on resources and efforts on the part of the United States. Uh, th that this policy, this adjustment, has come under criticism by some circles. And I have been myself sympathetic to those, uh, uh, those criticism. People argued that during the demonstrations in Iran, for example, after the election, that the U.S. was not as active as it should have been in, in, in finding ways to be supportive of the, of the uh, uh, opposition uh, parties. There has been even recent criticism of the U.S. reaction to elections in Egypt, the, the difficulties that that election has produced. But I believe that, that uh, uh, the, the, there is a pronounced emphasis on real politics of dealing with uh, states and facts as they are and less motivated by where you think things ought to go. I think that is, that is an, an, an emphasis that is likely to, uh, to be pleasing to a lot of players uh, in the governments uh, of the area, but perhaps less to uh, civil society groups, to, uh, to forces that, uh, that, 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 that want change. I believe also uh, that uh, as a result of the uh, uh, shifts in the uh, 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 geopolitical issues uh, in the world, there is going to be a greater sh focus on the issues of uh, East Asia, both in terms of uh, diplomacy and in terms of, uh, of military uh, uh, strategy for the longer term to adjust to the balance of power changes that are taking place there. Not that the Middle East will not be important. I think uh, I mentioned that the issue of Iran in particular and what happens uh, uh, in its nuclear program, uh, which is rich with possibilities of, uh, uh, since the talk is supposed to talk about both opportunities and risks, the risks are clear. And, and so far, the effort of the administration, which wanted to solve this problem uh, through engagement and dialogue and reaching out uh, uh, to, uh, to Iran and reaching out at the highest levels with Iran, has not produced uh, the kind of results that the administration was hoping for. Uh, nevertheless, given the reactions of others in the region, to to uh, potentially continuing Iranian progress with their nuclear program uh, presents potential scenarios in which the U.S. willy-nilly may be uh, brought in into a crisis situation that, that, uh, that uh, could have uh, significant implications for uh, violence and conflict and instability uh, in the region. That, I think, remains a, a, a significant factor of uncertainty. With regard to Afghanistan and, and Pakistan part, I believe that at this point, as you know, the, there is a, a push for, a, for changing the balance of power in Afghanistan away from uh, uh, what looked like uh, the Taliban gaining the upper hand. And as the administration has conceptualized uh, to stop the momentum of the Taliban, with a desire, however, to reach a diplomatic settlement working to change a, a, a Pakistani strategy uh, towards Afghanistan to seek a more cooperative relationship between Afghanistan and Pakistan. But this has run into, uh, so far, has not produced uh, uh, at the diplomatic level the kind of breakthrough with Pakistan that the, the administration uh, was hoping for through a lot of effort that it has made. Uh, 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 but uh, uh, this raises the question of if the change does not take place, uh, the changes on the ground as a result of a greater military effort, to what extent it can be consolidated, uh, and to what extent, if without Pakistani support, you can get a political settlement uh, even if the balance of power changes in Afghanistan, 
that can bring an end to, to violence. And therefore, there is going to be greater emphasis on building Afghan forces to hand off the responsibility increasingly uh, to, the, uh, to the Afghans. Uh, and and, and uh, 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 my judgment is that, that uh, uh, it's going to be very hard for the U.S. to further escalate beyond where it is in terms of its commitment. The question is how long will this level of commitment remain? Uh, but I believe that uh, 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 it was understood by the administration earlier that the emphasis on uh, 2011 had had a negative effect, and, and therefore there is a change now to talk more longer term 2014. But the direction is clear that, that, that the administration and the coalition generally is looking towards decreased responsibility and greater Afghan, uh, Afghan responsibility, and that the need there is for a, a diplomatic settlement, although the exact outlines of what that settlement would look like and the mechanism for how it will be brought about are still, I think, under consideration. Now, the issue uh, of, 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 uh, of uh, 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 economic problems of the United States uh, and the rise of other powers would mean that it's, uh, there will be a relative decrease in emphasis, uh, the challenge of Iran notwithstanding, uh, the, the pullout of U.S. forces from Iraq by the end of uh, next year, uh, uh, that there will be a greater emphasis on economic issues uh, because the U.S. position in the world ultimately rests on its economic and military power. And its military power cannot be sustained without its economic power also uh, being such to, to be able to, 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 to afford the kind of capabilities that, uh, that uh, its global role so far has required. And therefore, uh, there is going to be a, a more uh, increased emphasis on, in terms of economic engagement around the world. To, to uh, meaning uh, that uh, its relationship will be more focused on developing mutually beneficial economic relations than it has been, uh, particularly with regard to this region in the course of the last 10, to, uh, 10 years or so, where the emphasis has been massively on the security, uh, on the security front. I think there will be an adjustment uh, uh, to, to, uh, to, uh, to do that. And at the same time, given the other powers are rising, this shift globally in terms of balance that's slowly taking place, there will be more competition also, uh, and, and, and more competition among the major uh, and, uh, existing and rising powers on the economic and other fronts in this area. Now, I think that uh, the, 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 the uh, focus of the United States, uh, as a result of the election that we, uh, we just saw, uh, and the, the continuing challenge of dealing with the problem of political polarization at home, uh, uh, inability to come together to deal with the big domestic issues of taxation and, uh, and expenditure how to deal with the problem of debt, how to deal with the problem of uh, s slow economic growth, will also probably strengthen those, if, if it's not dealt with in the near term, to strengthen uh, a withdrawal, less focus on the world. Although I believe that the, the American president uh, will generally resist that because uh, uh, presidents tend to want to, uh, even when they have more domestic problems, tend to want to be more active internationally because that's where they can be, they are more independent uh, than they are when they deal with big domestic issues where Congress and others play a much bigger role. But nevertheless, I think that, uh, that uh, if uh, uh, there is the continuing stalemate uh, to deal with the economic issues, the next election may produce an outcome where 
the influence of those who seek to withdraw from the world more, to focus more on America's internal problem may become much more pronounced. Uh, it may be a more nationalist uh, uh, United States, uh, but it may be uh, also a less, a, a less as engaged on all fronts uh, as it has been now, and therefore there may be uh, the challenge of how do you become more selective uh, would, would be front and center uh, focused uh, 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 by the political system in the United States. So that's why I call this a period of, of transition uh, that uh, the United States is going through, in part informed by the changes around the world, in, par in, par in part informed by its own internal challenges of the economy that many countries are facing, informed by by, uh, by the experience uh, uh, of, of dealing with the issues uh, that, uh, that, uh, that uh, uh, it has been dealing with in this region uh, for the past uh, at least eight or nine years. With that, I look forward to your questions, your comments, your suggestions. Thank you very much.